Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, give the video a thumbs up. Apologies for this. I just don't, I don't have the effort. Um, so December haul, I got some books for myself and my friend Melanie and I did a gift exchange. And my friend Joanne and I did a gift exchange, so I got some books to show. So first off, I myself bought the sequels to um, Rother Weird, which I read in 2020 and really enjoyed it. It's a weird adult historical, kind of alternative historical um, fantasy that is just a lot of fun and I really wanted the sequels. So I gra grabbed Wintertide, which I think is book two, and then Lost Acre, which I believe is book three. And all of them have these really cool maps on the covers, which... I love those kinds of covers. So now I have the trilogy. Mm, let me show you. So they all match my, whoops, my Rother Weird one now. And for an adult fantasy slash historical, um, I love the pub publisher. I think it's Joe jo Fletcher. Yeah, Joe Fletcher. Their books are like $10 cheaper than all other, <laughs> all other publishers putting out the same kinds of books. So love that and they all look so pretty together now and they all got pretty maps on the cover so hopefully I can read these in 2021. Actually that's perfect that this is the end of the series so one of my prompts for each month is to finish a series a month so when I'm doing my TBRs for the month I will slot these in. There's nothing uh, lifted or anything on the front and the under dust jacket on this one is a dark blue whereas the under dust jacket for the last one kind of matches this mustardy outside. Then I picked up these Violent Delights. I really really want it so badly um, and it's all matte on there but the um, silver text and a bit of the dragon is lifted a little bit. It's so pretty. It's supposed to be Romeo and Juliet in Shanghai in like 1920s I think it is and everyone's just absolutely loving it. And if you ever want to feel like an underachiever this is the author's first book. She's an undergrad and hit New York Times bestsellers with her first book. So uh, but the under dust jacket is black with this silver uh, knife there and the spine. I am super excited to read this. I've heard nothing but really positive things and if you've ever been on my channel you know that I am a big fan of anything to do with Shakespeare retellings, imaginations, messing with, manipulations, all that fun stuff. Very excited for it which is why I'm excited for 2021 because there's quite a few of those coming out so this is one that I want to get to very very soon. I waited for forever just in case I was getting it for gifts or whatever but I never did so I picked up my own copy of Salvation by Karen Licks. This is another one that will fit into my monthly challenge to finish one series a month. I have Sanctuary, loved Sanctuary. Got book two, which is Containment. I haven't read that one yet because I was like waiting to see if there's supposed to be an audiobook for it because the audiobook for Sanctuary was so good. Such good narration. Then it's just never come out. I don't know why. Um, and then this one came out. So this is the last one. And it's also, she's an Alberta based author. We don't have a ton of Canadian authors, let alone Alberta based ones in my reading realm. So I'm very excited to see the end of this sci-fi sci-fi series. It was very good. I highly recommend this series. I don't think I got enough hype. And the under dust jacket is a yellow to kind of match the this yellow here on the cover. And now I have all three. It's blue, blue, red, and and yellow. I was debating getting this book for a while, and then I saw it on the um Kirkus and someone else did like best books of the years and did like a middle grade children section and this one came up on at least two lists that I saw so I was like just read it. Um, she wrote uh, Curiosity House trilogy which is another one that I'm going to finish this year. I read a book one and two I just have to read book three. Loving that. I really like her voice as a middle grade author. I think I've read two books of her YA stuff. Wasn't a huge fan of it um, but I really like her middle grade content for sure. So I freaking love this cover too, the illustrations on it. Um, the Magnificent Monsters of Cedar Street, which sounds maybe a bit like kind of Curiosity House almost. And it's this like burnt orange underneath. The red on my shirt is probably not helping this, but it's like a burnt orange um, and like a cream text on here. I love, I love this cover so much. The illustrations and even on the back there's some more illustrations. So I love this. I'm so excited to read this one super soon. So I was planning on, well, I am planning on reading uh, We Are Not Free uh, in January. I have an arc of it actually, but I had yet to read the way I'm reading it this month. Um, but I saw it in the bookstore. <laughs> I just had to buy it. 
Um, there's nothing lifted or anything, though it's like a, I don't know, ste not steel. I don't know how to explain the texture on it. I don't know. I, I like the texture on it. Um, but this is the uh, multi-generational impact from a, a couple different points of view. Um, I think it's in San Francisco or the Bay Area um, about a Japanese internment camps. And I'm very excited about that topic alone. Um, but Tracy Chi is also an author that I just absolutely loved her speaker series with speaker... No, where speaker... Oh my god, where is it? The reader, speaker, and the storyteller. Amazing series. So freaking good. And this is uh, contemporary. So switching it up from what that was. And I'm very hopeful. And this is another one that got named on a bunch of best books of 2020 lists. And I'm just annoyed with myself that I just never got <laughs> to the arc. I picked up myself my own copy of Ava Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch. I read this in, was it November or October? Loved it so much. It was one of the best books I read that month um, by Julie Abe. Um, it is definitely tons of Kiki's Delivery Service vibes. So much of, of, of that. Um, but the main character uh, doesn't have the magical powers that she would expect considering how well known her mother is. And when you essentially once you like approved by the council with your magical powers you're sent on like a quest position thing and they don't give her one because they say she's like not gifted enough so she convinces them and she goes on her way and that's where it goes very kiki's delivery service and i loved it so much i cannot wait for book two to come out um it's so just like even the that that, that just like very studio ghibli-esque um like, especially with the woman with her, like, waving her hand. I don't It's just so cute. And the underdust jacket is this teal, this robin's eggy color, white, and then the spine writing is reddish. Well, it's, it's red, but with a very deep orange hue, for sure. And I just really wanted it after I read it so badly. <laughs> I am so happy my wonderful friend Joanne gifted me a copy of Cake Pop Confidential by Stephen Lee. I am reading this in January through the audio, the audiobook through the library, but now I have a physical copy to follow along with. This was a weird release that it's YA book but it came out in both hardcover and paperback like right away like at the same time but in North America you you wait like bare minimum a year normally before it comes out in paperback so that's just odd but I love this because that is Mewmule from Mama Moo and then the rest of the girls look like Itzy so I don't know <laughs> where that's going but I'm very excited. Um, Candace Park knows a lot about playing role. For most of her life she's been playing the role of the perfect Korean American daughter but she has a talent and she's been keeping it from the world. She can sing. Like really sing. And when she's chosen from thousands to train for a spot of the biggest K-pop label's first ever girl group she'll have her first chance. I feel like this has to be hinting at Big Hit because they're supposed to be collecting trainees, female trainees for girl group. Um, but plunging into the grueling life of K-pop trainee will be tougher than she imagined. In the label's headquarters in Seoul, Candace must own her performance skills to within an inch of her life, all while navigating the complex hierarchies and rules. Rule number one, no dating, which soon becomes impossible to follow. I don't understand, like, Korea's concept of, like, purity and all that stuff. It just seems wildly weird to me. Anyways, I'm super excited about this one, and I hope it's good. Another book that I have read, uh, I read this in November, I want to say, that sounds right, um, Battleborn by Amy Kaufman. This is the third and final book in the Elementals trilogy. I love this trilogy so much. I think this book probably could have been pushed into like being a part of book two because it's not really big. It's a very short book. But nonetheless, I love this series so much. The cover is like very um, metallic-y glittery. And then the underdust jacket is black and then the spine is white. And I am just so happy that I now have all of the books in the series because this is a wonderful middle grade, wonderful message, and I'm going to keep probably rereading it every once in a while. And again, from my wonderful, beautiful friend Joanne, she gave me Nemesis, which is another one that is going into my monthly goals of finishing a series per month. I have read books one, uh, the, oh, the Diabol, I was going to say book one is The Empress. No, book one is The Diabolic, book two is The Empress. Both fantastic. And the author pushed this book like three times and I got very frustrated <laughs> but it's finally in my hands uh, I finally have my own copy of it so I do it's been a while so I want to reread books one and two with this I'll binge them back to back probably the empress was like a whoa whoa ending so like I am so excited for whatever the hack 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 whatever the heck happens in the nemesis and there's nothing on the front but the spine is like metallic silvery it's like an invert, basically, of of this. I'd never seen that before. I, I like it. I'm a very big fan of that. And I just, oh. 
I have a feeling this one's gonna hurt, just like an inkling. And as I suspected, my wonderful friend Melanie gave me a copy of The Demon World, so now I have book one, two, and three of the Smoke Thieves trilogy, which will once again fall into my monthly uh, TBR to finish a series a month. Um, Smoke Thieves, I'll definitely have to do a reread. It's been quite a while since I read that book. And then uh, The Demon World, this is book two, and then I got The Burning Kingdom from my friend Jennifer in November, I think it was. Um, so... I'm so excited. This was a, like a very like everyone was super excited when it came out but I think like it's not for everyone but I really enjoyed it so I'm very curious about this. A lot of moving parts, a lot of different characters um, and relatively dark and grin gritty kind of, of fantasy with bunch of political intrigue. So this is arguably the book that I wanted the most out of everything on my Christmas list this year so I'm so happy that I got it. Um, I got Queen of Volts from a, by Amanda Foody from Melanie which will, as you can guess, it is the third book in the Ace of Shades series so as you can imagine one of the months this year we will be doing it as our finish a series a month. Can you see how many books? At first I was like I don't really have that many open series. No I legitimately do. <laughs> I will probably put continue putting that prompt on my like 2022 goal list for myself for reading. But Queen of Volts is the wrap up. I'm so sad. But I'm hope I want to try and get this series done in the next like month or two because her middle grade series is starting the accidental apprentice and i have that one pre-ordered because the cover looks amazing and it was pitched as nevermore meets pokemon which is everything i want but i'm scared of this one <laughs> so i will i don't know i I also don't know if I need to reread the ones and twos, but I probably should just because a lot of moving parts. Yeah, I'll reread one and two. I've read for the first book like five times at this point, but Queen of Volts is the tier last one. Um, under Dust Jacket is black and the spine is purple. There. Oh, I forgot to put this one in. I bought this, um, The Midnight Library by Matt Hegg, because I saw it in Shoppers Drug Mart for like 40% off or 25% off, something like that. It cost me like 15 bucks. I've been interested in this just because the word library is in the title, in all honesty. And then it got named on like a bunch of like best books of the years, and then I saw on sale, and I was like, you stupid if you don't buy it at this point. So I grabbed it. Um, whew, it's got deckled edges. I really like those. <laughs> Between life and death, there is a library. When Nora Seed finds herself in, in the Midnight Library, she has a chance to make things right. Up until now, her life has been full of misery and regrets. She feels she has not let she feels she feels has let everyone, including herself, down, but things are about to change. The books in the Midnight Library enable Nora to live as if she has done things differently. With the help of an old friend, she can now undo every one of her regrets as she tries to make her life perfect. But things aren't always what she imagined they'd be, and soon her choices in the library put herself in extreme danger. Which, I'm always interested in this concept of, like, I feel like that was one of my interest in the book um, The Binding by Bridget Collins is like you can take away all the bad stuff but the bad stuff also contributes to where you go in life and just because that was bad doesn't mean that if you change it that doesn't mean things are not going to also go bad so I'm very curious about this one I also love that it says infinite lives and then there's a cat on the cover I love that and the last pieces I'm really happy I got these because I wanted them but they're very pricey in Canada and I was like I don't know that I can justify that right now um, but I got a copy of The Lives of Saints by Lady Bardigo, which is like a novella um, bound up of like some, is it the stories or, hold on, I can't remember. Yeah, it's the uh, tales and the martyrdoms of the saints that we talk about in the original Shadow and Bone series, and it's got illustrations in here. Whoops. Whoops. Oh, open back up. It's very beautifully done and designed, so I can understand like it's a little bit more expensive, but I was like, that's still expensive. And if you haven't seen, I think it's April they announced they dropped the teaser trailer for the Shadow and Bone Netflix series. April is the is the date now. I am very freaking excited for that book. And on, honestly, at first I was like, Benjamin Barnes is a weird casting point. But honestly, the more and more I look at them, I'm like, mm, no, Benjamin Barnes is the darkling. I get it. I also really need to watch that series that he did. That miniseries is like the gold digger or something like that, where he's like a gold digger. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, and the last book that I got was the collector's edition, the box thingy of The Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. This one was like $50 in Canada. It's like wild. Um, and yes, I have the paperback of the new covers and the hard covers of the old covers of the Shadow and Bone trilogy and Six of Crows in the regular hardcover and the collector's editions. I'm in the cult on this one. Um, and this is the box set here. There's a little bit of a ribbon here. And then this is the actual 
book. Here. It's so pretty. And then this is the spine. And these, they're white, but they're like, um, like textured leather almost. And it's, oh, like, they're expensive, but if you like the fandom, I feel like of the, like, ridiculous number of reprints of popular series, this is probably a series that has been done, like, the best quality of those. Um, looking at you, Bloomsbury, with all of the freaking reprints of Harry Potter and every fucking version imaginable. And, um... I'm very excited about this one and whenever I do I'm probably going to reread the Shadow and Bone trilogy if not the whole Six of Crows I, once the TV show's out. I'll watch the show first and then kind of go from there and decide what I want to reread because I don't know exactly what the show looks like because they're somehow merging both the series which I don't know how they're gonna do. But anyways so those are the books that I managed to accumulate in the month of December. I'm very excited about all of them. All of them I desperately want to read. None of them were like impulse buy books that I'm gonna put on my shelf and never touch again. Um, so I'm very lucky about that. And then my mother also gave me a $30 gift card for Indigo and then I also got a gift card from work from anywhere and I picked Indigo. So I have two gift cards that maybe I'll do a video on like let's go gift card, let's go shopping with a gift card or something like that in this year. But I'm very happy with all these. I'm so excited and they all fit really for the most part into my 2021 reading goals for myself especially to round up a series a month and I, it really doesn't hit you how many series I had doesn't hit didn't hit me how many series I had open until I started going through and trying to like slot in some of my stuff in my TBR for the months and months coming forward and I'm like oh my god I didn't finish that series either oh no so yeah so anyways these are the books that I collected in the month of December what did you get for the holidays I'd love to know and I will link all of these books in the description box down below I will also link all of my social media if you follow me I'll follow you back stay safe wear a mask black lives matter the vaccine is not going to kill you or give you autism and um yeah